In this video, we'll be covering Python type hinting. Type hinting was added to the standard library starting in Python 3.5. And keep in mind, type hints are not enforced at runtime. So when the code is actually running, any type hints that you have in your code is just going to be ignored. There are several benefits of using type hints. For one, reviewing code that you haven't touched in a long time. Um, if it's something that's fairly complex, um, it'll, it might be easier to read if you use type hints. You'll know what types of data to send the function, different functions. You'll also know what type of data you're getting back and whether it could be optional, something like a, a list or none as your data type being returned. So it's just easier to uh, read and maintain. It also catches bugs that otherwise get overlooked. And also it's an improvement over traditional documentation. So doc strings of something that are something that have been used traditionally. One drawback of them is sometimes somebody will refactor something or change something and then not update the doc strings. So that happens frequently. Uh, so this is basically another tool that you can have in your tool belt to uh, make code easier to maintain. And so we're going to be using MyPy. MyPy is a static type checker. Um, what this does is it inspects your code and makes sure that um, everything, um, all the types, and makes sure all the types are as expected. And we're going to go through several examples of this. Keep in mind also, if you're a PyCharm user, that it's also built into PyCharm. So there's a very good video on how to use static types with PyCharm. And I'll put that link in the description. Okay, so it's time to go through some examples here. The first thing we need to do is install MyPy. So on Python 3 or whichever Python you're using, if you're using a virtual environment. So we need to pass the .m option and we want pip install MyPy. Okay, so on the top section here, we have some variables that are declared. Um, so it's very easy with, vari with variables. You just need the variable name, colon, and then whatever type it is and then we're setting a value. So in order to run the uh, MyPy checker, so you run MyPy and then a file name. And since it's returned nothing, that means there are no errors or no issues. Now this is, let's say for instance, we put 1.0. So this will actually convert the value from a, into a, a float basically. So if we were to rerun this, um, it's going to give us an incompatible types error. So it's it's enforcing that we maintain the same, the correct data type. However, we can run this code and it'll work just fine. And notice we've got no errors or anything. So like I said, those are, these type hints are going to be ignored uh, when the code is actually being executed. Now we could also uh, accomplish the same thing with lists. So I'm gonna create a new list. Um, it's going to be a list of integers. And we're just going to put in, uh, let's put in three things. And so what we have to do is we have to um, import from the typing library. So from typing, import list. Uh, so typing comes with the standard library, so there's no need to uh, install anything. So we should be able to run this or run MyPy. And it didn't give us anything back. Now keep in mind, uh, Python has ways to, so inside of a list, you could just put in any data type uh, normally. So let's say we wanted, actually, let's just put this in first. Let's say we want a list that goes like this. Three, four, five and six, um, so this code is perfectly valid. Uh, so in order to use type hinting, so we're going to have to put a colon and then list. So what we need now is what's called a union. So a union will accept more than one type basically for each uh, item in the list. And so we need nested square brackets here. So we want to accept integers and strings. So any item could be, as long as it's a number or a string, then it should be valid. Uh, so we also need to import, actually we need to import union. And then if we run MyPy again, um, 
it's good as long as we have the correct data types. Like if I were to make this a float and then rerun this, then it's going to give us an error. Okay, in the second example, we're going to uh, type hit our functions. So we have a simple function here, just getting the batting average of a baseball player. To compute that, all we need to do is take hits divided by at bats. Um, so the function arguments, um, we're taking in two integers as arguments. So we can type in those, so apply an int. And so what we want out here, uh, right before the colon to end our um, defining the function line, we need to put an arrow and then uh, so right here is what's going to be our return type so we're returning a float because we're taking a two two integers dividing them and rounding them off to three decimal places and then so if we were to run this and we get an amount returned to us if we run my pi um, then it's, since we got nothing back, it accepted the uh, type ins that we put in. Now let's say we had a use case where if the player does not have any at-bats, we don't want to do a calculation. We want to just return none. Uh, so this is going to cause a couple problems for us uh, type ins wise um, based on what we currently have. So let's just grab another one. Let's say we'll call this player player2. And let's just make both of these zero. And it's just going to print the output. And so right now, this is going to cause a problem. Um, we're going to get a divide by zero error. So let's go ahead and check if this value is none, if at bats is none. Or if, let's see, just see if it's greater than zero. So it's greater than zero. We're going to actually do the calculation. Else. If we run the code, it's fine. We're just going to get a value back of none. However, if we run our um, type ints check, so this is incompatible because we declared up here that it's always going to return a float. Um, and it's for the second player, it returns none or it has the potential. It actually doesn't run any of this. It knows that since there's a return none here, that this doesn't um, match up with this. So what we could do is put in a union, kind of like what we did with um, the list variable. So let's go from type, from typing, import union. So in here is union, and then let's say uh, float or none. And let's go ahead and run my pi again. So now it accepted it because since we put union here, the return value can either be one or both of these values. Uh, but in this situation, we can actually um, simplify this a little bit more. So union, um, so this is going to be the same. We can use what's called an optional. So these two things will be equivalent. So let's uh, paste this in here. And then if we were to rerun this, actually what we need to do is we also need to import optional. So let's go ahead and try this again. And uh, we're still getting the expected output. And one, one good thing about MyPy is it'll only check the items that ha actually have the type hints. So if we have another function, let's say you're let's say you have a really large code base and then you just for whatever reason you're not in a position where you can add type hints to every single function and it's just kind of a work in progress. What MyPy can do is just evaluate the items and ignore all the, all the rest of them. So if I'm going to go, go ahead and put another function in here.
Okay, so I've added a get slugging percentage function. And then if we go ahead and run MyPy, um, it's, since there's no type hinting or anything like that, it's just not gonna evaluate it. However, I'm gonna create yet another function that's going to return us a tuple. It's gonna get uh, the values of both of these. And then I'm gonna pass in the exact same values. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, type in these. So this is gonna create a situation that comes up periodically. And so these are all integers. And the return type uh, is going to be a tuple. And actually we need square brackets. And we're gonna return two floats. And so what we need to do is import tuple up here from typing. So hits we can derive, we can say hits are uh, singles. So singles, doubles, triples, and home runs, those are all types of hits. So they should match the total number of hits that the player had. And so we get batting average. And so what we need to do is we need to pass in all these arguments, which match uh, what we have here. So our return value is gonna be a tuple. So we just need uh, batting average comma slugging. So this signature uh, theoretically should work because um, we're expecting two floats, but there's an issue that's gonna come up. And I'm just gonna call this player stats. And this is actually going to be exactly the same. So we can check the code first, see if it runs. So yeah, it does work. Uh, we get a 336 batting average and a 677 slugging percentage uh, based on these figures, which were what we were expecting. Um, so if we run MyPy, So we have an incompatible return type. So we, yes, we did get back two floating, two floats uh, right here. And this matched what was expected. But if we look at this, um, so this is um, optional float. If we go to our function up here, what we're expecting back um, is optional because if we go in here, then uh, our batting average function is actually being called from the get stats function. And so what it does is it evaluates this, seeing that uh, this item right here has a chance of being none because according to this function, it can be an optional, it could be none or it could be a float value. So what we need to do here is add the optional. So the first item is going to be an optional float. And then if we were to run MyPy again, um, so now it's happy. So it not only checks the function that you're actually calling, it, if, if, that, if this function is calling any other functions, it's, it's going to basically recursively check um, everything else. Um, so this is one situation where um, this can save you from getting bugs because let's say you're always expecting a float value return and then we... Uh, do something else with the value of this and it's actually none and you, you can get you run into you know like a type error or something like that so that this is the type of situation where type hinting can save save you from running into uh, runtime errors and we can take this one step further um, so right here we're using just a standard tuple uh, we can use a, a name tuple also so I'm going to come up here and then import name tuple And then what we can do is we can declare our um, name tuple outside. Our return value we can declare outside of the function. And let's just give it a class name of stats result. So name tuple is what we're extending. And the first item is that we're going to be returning is the uh, batting average. 
So remember, this has to be optional float. The second item will be slugging percentage, and that will be a float. So all we need is our return value right here is just, we can get rid of this and just uh, put stats result class as our um, return value. And then, so we're actually made returning the named uh, tuple. And um, so in our return value, uh, we're just using this class. So if we go ahead and run it, just make sure it runs correctly. Okay, so we see that we actually get our um, name tuple item back and it has the values. And if we run mypy, and yeah, that's so, so that is a valid um, function. Or that, that passes the mypy validation. So if we were to continue working on this, the next step would be to go into the slugging percentage function and add type hints to that also. However, we're gonna stop at this point. This is just an introduction to using type hints, uh, but we could um, improve this and make this better, but I think we'll stop at this point right here. Thank you for watching.